Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day. So we're finally getting around to look at some of these bigger snakes. Now I know none of my snakes are that massive, but they are a lot bigger than the babies we've been looking at. And I know um, the last few videos have really been focused on new snakes or baby snakes or the snakes in the racks. And so it's always nice when I can interact with these big snakes and bond with them and have a good um, trusting relationship with them because as they get bigger we don't need any issues with biting or defensive or angry snakes so this is my female ghost boa which I would have to say is probably one of my favorite snakes so the ghost is the anry and the hypo she's 100% head for albino but of course we wouldn't know that until we um, breed her and then see what the odds are on that so the only snake that I would probably want to breed with her would be the snow and that's probably enough for another two years. So we'll see how everything goes between now and then with the boas. But breeding is really not 100% on my mind right now because a lot of things can happen with breeding. And so I just like the snakes the way they are. So this is my, so she is 2018, growing up pretty slow, but um, getting a, a pretty decent size on her. I just love the colors on her from the grays to the white belly, all the black speckling on her, and really like the tail on her with the circles and then the little design right there. But she's super sweet and she's kind of, kind of crazy. <laughs> um, a lot different than holding the ball pythons, that's for sure. But, so I'm feeding her on medium rats every 14 to 17 days. Like I said, I, I really, I don't breed any of my animals, so I really don't have a need to um, get them up to a certain size at a certain age. Because normally breeders, around four years, they try to get them up to a certain size. I don't know what size it is, but probably bigger than what I have on my animals. And they're doing pretty well in the uh, the PVC enclosures. And we'll check out the albino really fast. It's 2016. So this is just a basic albino. And I think a lot of people are so wrapped up into the crazy morphs and all the new stuff that people just don't look at the simple stuff. And we'll look at the, her as, as simple as they are. And the other two are non, um, nothing crazy, not high hygiene uh, morphs or anything like that. So it's just a simple basic albino and not head for anything. And she just looks really good. So this was my second boa that I that I bought as a baby. I try to buy all my snakes as babies so I can interact with them. I know their health and um, I can bond with them as they're younger. And when you get an older snake, you really don't know how they were um, raised, how they were treated, how they're handled or anything like that. I mean, it's fine if you want to put the work in with the bigger snake if it's defensive, but I'd rather have a baby snake and then interact with it all the way up until they're adults and try not to have any issues with them. But you guys know that I have a few angry snakes as babies. So working on that, hopefully they get better as adults, but the albinos do fade out from when they're babies and when they're babies, they, they look crazy because they're super bright orange. You can see all the reds, all the pinks, all the whites in them, and they just look really good. And then over the time they, they fade out, but they still look really, really nice. I think a lot of people are getting into these sun glows because I don't really know what makes up the sun glow, but I know there is the albinoism in it. And then they do stay a lot brighter. They keep their colors, they keep their patterns um, a lot more than the regular albino does. But again, a lot of people just skip over some really nice snakes because they just want to jump into the three, four, five gene animals. And even if they're just pets, um, I mean, this is a really good animal to have. She looks good, perfect temperament, no problems feeding, nothing like that. So a lot of people I've seen asking on the internet, I don't know if you guys can see, but she has these lines on her right there, down her body. And those are just basically what people would call them as lazy lines. So when they get coiled up, and I've really only um, noticed it on the albinos, which I'm not sure why, but she does have quite a few of them. So when they coil up for a period of time, 
it just bends the scales and the scales re-bend back. Or when they shed, the scales go back to normal anyway. So it's nothing, nothing's wrong with her. It's nothing major. It's just her in a, in all coiled up for the evening <laughs> or whatever. And then that's just what happens. But I, like I said, I, I don't notice that on any, uh, any of the other snakes, <clears throat> just really the albinos. So we'll put her back. And then my common bow would shed. So this is her shed right here. Perfect shed, no problems. Which means she is in her new colors and she is a different size. So we'll get her out and then I do use the hooks. You know, like I said, cause I don't need any issues. And the common bow, she likes to strike the glass. She likes to strike the glass and the Argentine, as we all know up here, really likes to strike the glass. So I don't need her jumping out at me, getting wrapped up for extended period of time. We'll just kind of tap her on the head, kind of move around a little bit. All right, where you are, good to go. So we'll take her out. This is, I don't know. Yeah, she's, we're gonna dump all this out. So hold on a second. So I would say she's my biggest boa right now. She's definitely bigger than the anaconda. She is four years old, but the anaconda, which we will try to look at, depending where she is in her cage, um, at two years old, it's definitely getting up there as well. So this is her in her new skin. And like I said, a lot of people skip over the basic snake. So this is just the normal non-red tail um, boa, B-I, B-C-I, and you know, she's not half for anything. She was like 50 bucks at when I first got her my very first Bella, and she's been amazing. She looks really nice. A lot of the commons do come with different colorations, different patterns, different, just different stuff. So they don't all look the same, but I do love her tail pattern. So her tail was a lot redder when she was a baby. It definitely looks a lot browner or rusty color, which is normal for these snakes. And then the true red tails, as they get older, the, the, the tails get brighter. Uh, red and then there's some blood differences um, in them as well so she likes to she always likes to climb she likes to go up to the ceiling she always likes to go up to the fan um, and I'm probably a horrible snake owner because I don't give her like branches and stuff I did I've given her brand I've, I've actually put branches and stuff in here with them but it just became a pain because I take my snakes out all the time like every day I'm interacting with multiple snakes and taking them out and and stuff like that so all of the leaves and all of the branches it just got in the way and um i don't think with how much i take them out they really need enrichment um because they're always out climbing around anyways like this or something but it's not like i keep them in there and then i never take them out so they can stretch out or or do this or anything like that but so it's just a common boa and people, like I said, people just skip over really nice looking animals to go for the morphs. Now, obviously, there's nothing wrong with them because I have them. But if you're on a budget and you just want to get a good snake, there is nothing wrong with getting a $75, $50, $100 common, depending if it's male or female. And she's, there we go, there's like, you can't, she just looks really good like the tail on her to me she looks really good but again i'm biased of the animals that i have i mean people could think all my snakes are ugly or don't have cool colors which is you know beauty is in the eye of the beholder as they say but i do need to clean the glass on it so this plexiglass is horrible it scratches it nicks up it does all this stupid stuff and it just makes it look ugly especially with her when she strikes at the glass so now that we're in a different area different room they're in the back corner, so there's not a lot of traffic through like there was before. So she hasn't struck the glass in a while. Now, as I say that, she probably will. But it's just been a, a lot easier on my mind and on my heart because um, a lot of snakes can strike the glass and they can break their necks and they can break their jaws and they can do a whole bunch of damage to themselves, which is why I'm not 100% 
totally a fan of the PVC with the windows. I mean, it's cool to look in here, see if it has display animals for humans. And as for us, it looks cool to see them. But as a snake, um, we don't want anything bad to happen to them. And if we can eliminate that, that would be the best thing. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying these are the best either, but they're not hitting their faces up here and they're not going and they're not breaking their breaking their jaws or anything like that so this girl makes me a little nervous sticking my hand in here because uh, yeah she just bit me so <laughs> and i had her out earlier today too so i think she got some teeth in me so a little bit of blood which is what she does she's super defensive in her cage but we'll still take her out so bear with me and then we'll see the attitude change once she's out. So she's all coiled up. She's probably a little stressed out. We'll see what happens though. So. All right, we got her out. And she's perfect. So this is the only snake that I really like to, um, you know, officially, <laughs> hook out because she is very defensive of her house or of her home and I don't think it was a, really a feeding response I think it's, she's always been that way since she was a baby I don't know if it's just because of the Argentines are like that I know some of you guys have told me that your Argentines are like that as well um, but you know that's always good to have a hook because if that was a feeding response she would have bit and she would have wrapped and then it would have taken me probably I don't even know how long 30 minutes to try to get her off, but I do have Listerine with um, mouthwash with alcohol. So if it got too bad or too annoying, then I can just pour some um, of that around her mouth and then she should let go. But I, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a tooth in me. But again, she's, so this is the Argentine boa. They are from Argentina and they are an endangered species down there, which kind of sucks because I mean, these are, I would like to say really <laughs> nice snakes and they are just not in their enclosures but so they can't be exported or anything like that into the into america so you have to find a special breeder and so it might be a little bit difficult for some people to find and then obviously because of that the prices go up just like the anacondas you can find anacondas for 50 bucks back in the 90s but since they rewrote the laws of importing and exporting you have to find special breeders on those as well so that automatically brings the pricing up on that so if you guys i mean they're about 900 dollars right now when i bought her in 2017 they're about 200 bucks so definitely a huge jump and i really don't see them going down anytime soon because like i said there's not that many people working with them and so it's just supply and demand basically but She's a gorgeous animal, black and white. They do have the max pink um, lines out there for sale. Those are really, really nice, but I just like the common black and white um, Argentine and beautiful tail on her. So a lot of people try to combine a true red tail or the BCI with these, and you can kind of see the difference um, on them because they do get the, the redder tail, the um, some of the saddling a little bit, but a lot of people, they just say, you know, don't muddy the water and just keep it a pure, pure blood, pure locality snake, which I would probably agree because she just looks really good just as she is. Nothing needs to be added to her at all. But um, some of you guys are have bought Argentines over the last couple of months, which is awesome. And you guys should because they're docile once she once once she's out she's obviously she's good and she's calm and you know we can move around her head and stuff like that and she's not defensive anymore or anything like that but they do have their adult colors and their baby colors so baby colors are more grayish um you can see the patterns a little bit more and then i would say around a year and a half she really started to dark out and then she got to her adult colors so really dark um with really nice white patterns and then her head is just phenomenal looking gorgeous snake all right we'll put her back even though now after she's out she probably doesn't even 
Like, she doesn't even want to go back. So I don't know why she bit me. But we'll just put her back there. And like I said, so since I took her out, I guarantee if I come back in five minutes, she's in her little home and she knows that. If I try to reach in there and grab her, she'll definitely, definitely bite me again. So we'll see where Pop-Tart is since we're on the bigger snakes. Um, we'll get my hook because I don't want to get bitten again. So... Yeah, I think I got a, uh, I think I got a tooth in because when I bend my finger, it really hurts right there. So I'll probably have to get some tweezers out and check that out. So where is Pop-Tart? I had her out earlier. And then, oh, she's probably in the way back behind her water tub, which I do need to clean and fill, which is a daily chore. Oh no, there she is right there. So I always feel bad because <laughs> I always feel bad waking her up if she's sleeping. And then I just leave some shed in here just for some decoration and decor. So I had her out earlier. And since the snakes are on a roll, oh, there she is. Come on out, come out, Pop-Tart. Come on. So she's, she's definitely getting some good size on her. We'll see if she comes out. I know this video is taking forever, but We'll see what happens. And I do, definitely do not want to get lit up <laughs> by her. I've never been bitten, never been hissed at, never had a threat pose from her. But anacondas are super unpredictable. And so you always, always, always have to know how sweet they are. I mean, she's extremely sweet. You guys know this. Um, but you always have to be careful with them because they can strike in any direction. They can strike uh, it without any warning. And they're very unpredictable snakes and that's the one thing that people will tell you when you first get into anacondas is you know when a ball python is going to bite you you know when a bow is going to bite you because they wrap up now i really wasn't paying attention to her i didn't think she was going to bite me but she probably was in an s pose and i just wasn't paying attention because i was talking to you guys and i was on the camera and stuff like that so i always 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 um use double precautions with her because she is getting up to a good size and I don't want her knowing that she can bite me and that it's an okay thing so she obviously is not really into a threat I mean pose right now so we'll take her out and I know you guys are probably like oh you too too cautious but I do this by myself as I said and as I get bigger I just want to be prepared and that uh, we don't have anything crazy going on so pop tart is big and uh, I think yeah I think my common yeah I don't know I think the common's a little bit thicker but I pop tart might have her on the length and I, I I should take them both out and put them side by side and see how they are at some point but man she is I mean once you see one granite kind of you've seen them all because they're they're just green with black spots spots on them are different on a lot of them but i really like her the orange band behind her eyes and she's just super sweet super relaxing and i know i'm going off on a tangent here but there's mountain dew and mountain dew is in shed so there we go we got two anacondas right there both females and get back in there there we go so that is it guys, um, that's it for the bigger snakes. And I know this video is forever long, but I really appreciate you guys um, sticking with it and all of the support. And hopefully you guys didn't mind seeing the snakes and that's it. So hopefully you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you guys on the next video.